Hello everyone, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. In the last video, we have created the user registration screen. Now in this video, we will code the user login screen. So the first thing that we need is another activity and in that activity, we will design the login interface. So let's create a new activity inside our activities package and a new activity and then we will select an empty activity. Now I will name it login activity. So this is our login activity and here we need to design the interface for user login. Oops, let me import R. Now inside this XML file activity login, we need to design the login interface, but I will not waste time in designing the login interface but I will use the interface that I created in the Java tutorial series. So I will copy everything of activity underscore login dot XML from the repository. I will copy everything and I will paste it here. And it will give some error because of the icons. So I will not use any icon for now. Now when this text view is clicked from main activity or user registration activity, we will navigate or we will open the login activity. So let's code this thing first. So come to the main activity and here we will write text view login dot set on click listener. And when the, when this is clicked, we will start the login activity and for this we can use the start activity method it takes an intent the first parameter is the current activity context because we are inside an on click listener we will write it like this at the rate main activity and the next parameter is the activity that we want to open so we will write login activity class dot java so this way we write in kotlin so it's done login activity will open when we will press that button or text view whatever you say now here we need to perform the login so first i need to show you the api for login so this is the user login api call and this is the response that we are cutting so to parse this response first we need a user data class and then we need a login response data class so we will create the classes inside the models package so let's create quickly the classes so first I need a data class for user so I will create a class and it will be a data class data class user and we need ID email name and school so we have val id of type string sorry it is int then val email of type string then val name of type string and val school of type string now remember the name of the variable should match with the json keys or if you don't want to match the variable name with the json key you need to define the json keys inside serialized name annotation like this okay but now i'm using the same names so it will work so delete this and we have the data class for user now we will create one more data class for the login response so create one more kotlin file class and i will name it login response and let's create a class and again this is a data class so we don't need the class body we have data class mm -hmm. and we will define error message and user so we have val error of type boolean then we have message of type string val message of type string and then we have val user of type user val user of type user that's it so we have our data class now come to api and define the call 
so again this is a post so we will use form url encoded and post and then we will create the function so the post is user login so we have user login then we will create a function let's say user login and when user login we need to pass email and password so we have field email email is of type string and then we have field password password is of type string as well so we have the user login method now come back to login activity and here when the button is clicked which is button login so we will write button login dot set on click listener when this button is clicked we will get the values we will get the email from edit text email dot text dot to string dot trim the same way we will get the password nice then oops we don't need semicolons now we can add validations and i can copy the validations from main activity oops we need to remove this and everything is good we are using activity login for this class okay so we have added the validations now if everything is fine what we will do we will send the request http request using kotlin and we have defined the api already here so what we will do we will use this retrofit client so we have retrofit client dot instance dot user login and to user login we will pass email and password then we will enqueue it oops I think I forget to define the return type of this user login so the return type of this user login is always a call of type login response the response data class that we define that's it yeah now come back to login activity and here we will enqueue it like this now it takes a callback of type response which is login response that's it now we need to implement the methods and we have the methods now inside on failure we can display the error message so let's display toast dot make text application context then t dot message and then the length of the toast and then show the toast so we have the error message here and inside on response we can check if the login is successful so first we will check if response dot body dot error so if there is no error so if there is no error we will consider the login as successful because if the login is successful we will get false so we are putting a not but if the login is unsuccessful we will get the error as true and we will get the message invalid credential so if there is no error we will log in the user else we will display the error message like this and we will get the message from the response dot body dot message and then the length of the toast show so if there is no error what we will do we will log in the user now here we need to store the user information and we will get the user information from this response we can get like response dot body dot user and we will get the user now we need to save this user so what i will do i will save the user in shared preferences 
now again i will not code the shared preferences thing but i will show you a very smart way of doing it so let's create a package name storage where we will sto store all the classes related to data storage and shared preferences as data storage so i will go to my previous repository and i will copy the code of shared pref manager that i created in the java series i will copy it and what i will do i will paste it here so i will create a class a kotlin class named shared pref manager and it is a kotlin class and what i will do i will paste the copied code here oops control c and control v now it will ask clipboard content seems to be java code do you want to convert it to kotlin and i will say yes i want to convert it to kotlin and then what will happen all the codes will get converted to the kotlin syntax automatically by the ide awesome right you can see the codes are converted now you need to make some changes like you need to import the context and import the user and everything else is nice now here instead of getters you need to write user.id user.email and user.name and school because in kotlin we don't have getters and setters yeah awesome and everything is done so you need to do some tweaks after copying the code from java so it is automatically converted into kotlin syntax and we have the shared pref manager now uh, go back to your login activity and here i will do like uh, shared pref manager dot get instance and i will pass here application context then i will call the method save user and i will pass the user that i will get from the response that's it now i will start the new activity so let's start the new activity by finishing everything so uh, let's go back to our code and inside login activity you see we use these flags to start the activity as a fresh activity by closing all the other activities so i will use the same here so let's write here uh, we have val intent equals to intent and we have application context and then i need another activity which will be our profile activity so let's create another activity so i have activity and empty activity and then i will name it profile activity so i have profile activity import it and inside login activity i will write profile activity class dot java that's it now i will set some flags to the intent and the flags would be this activity new task and activity clear task now uh, i will start the activity with the help of start activity function and i will pass the intent that's it and the user is logged in now inside login we can check by overriding the method so let's override on start
yeah this on start and inside on start what I will do I will check if the user is already logged in so I will check if shared pref manager dot get instance I can pass this here and then is logged in if the user is already logged in we will do this thing okay and then inside profile activity we will do the same let's go to profile activity and here we will check if the user is not logged in so I will put a not here if the user is not logged in I will start the login activity nice so our task is done let's try running the application but make sure if you are running on a real device because the server is our development server and not a real server so if our device wants to communicate with the local development server where our server code is our device and our computer should be connected so I will connect my phone with my MacBook with hotspot so let's do it quickly so I have Nokia 6 1 and now the devices are connected also confirm the IP address by going to the network preferences and in Windows you can use the IP config command it is 168.43.207 so let's confirm the IP 43.207 so it is 43.207 so the IP is correct it should work so let's test it I will open my device using Visor So this is our application now let's click on this text view the login activity has opened now click uh, enter the email and the password and let's click on this login button and you see the profile activity is open so it is working fine guys and one more thing I forget that if the user is already logged in uh, inside login activity so we need to do the same thing inside user registration activity as well so it will start the login uh, profile activity when the user is already logged in so it is fine now I will push the code to the repository and you can download the source code from there the link is given in the description of the video so please check that and I hope you found this video helpful if you did then please hit on the like button subscribe to my channel and also tell your friends to subscribe to this channel simplified coding and if you are having any question you can comment your question and if you don't like this video then please tell me that why you didn't like it so that I can improve myself so that's all for this video friends this is Bilal Khan now signing off